I could digress for just a moment and apologize to the audience, but uh, going back to the fellows who started behind the eight ball, Harry S. Truman. Now, I was a young, I was a young Marine in World War II, and we were segregated. Later, he stopped that baloney. And then the state of Israel, he created that. I would like you to tell me whether I built up a heroism for this man or not. Well, you're in good company if you have. I, I think that obviously the proof of the pudding is going to be in the eating. But having said that, if you look at even the relatively short history of the man from the day that uh, he was born, and he's been very open about describing the vicissitudes of his life, the uh, experiences that he's had, the motivations that uh, uh, impelled him to do what he did, rightly, wrongly, or whatever, the things that he feels he has learned from, uh, his own mistakes, which he has not uh, been particularly quiet about, uh, I think that we can be comfortable that when it comes to difficult moral choices, uh, the kind of moral choices that President Truman had to make, I'm exceptionally comfortable that if anyone in that office will do it and be able to do it with a clear conscience and sleep like a rock, it will be him because he is a reasoned man. He is a man who says, I'm not going to jump at uh, the sound of an explosion. I'm going to figure out who did it, why they did it, where they did it, why they chose the place to do it, and how we can then protect ourselves from it happening again. You're shaking your head. Have I said something that you want to comment on? So you think over every issue, too. Um, she was just simply saying that, that how can he sleep at night when he has so many problems confronting him and uh, uh, that poses to him and for him um, uh, so many challenges that he probably would need to stay up all night. I suggest to you that um, uh, he believes that he is doing the right thing and he has set in motion a process to enable us to do it well. Whether it turns out that way or not, at least he's comfortable that he's done all that he could do to give us the best chance of being the best that we can be. And I think that is what will give him comfort to say, uh, I can leave it at the office and, uh, and, and sleep. I can spend time with my children. I can be a family man when I have the opportunity to be. You need a microphone. Upstairs on your right here. Upstairs on the right. Hi. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Obama has not offered me a position in his cabinet. I'm the wrong guy to ask. Um, if, if he would have, theoretically, I would have been scared to death. <laughs> there, uh, I, I see the problems as being so many and so difficult. You certainly touched on many of them. Um, what's your thought on the priority? There has to be a priority. What, what priority would you think uh, Mr. Obama is setting? I think were he given the opportunity to give uh, a pre-inaugural address in 10 words or less, he would say the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And he would be absolutely correct. The fact is that our economy is in the situation that it is in, not simply because it's hard to get a loan, not simply because uh, liquidity in, has dried up, not simply because of a whole series of the obvious reasons, but because there is a crisis of confidence that we have bottomed, that we, are, that we have seen the worst and it's behind us, and now we can go forward and rebuild and be stronger coming out of this than we were going into it. So once that mindset is uh, brought back to the American consciousness and we feel optimistic about the future, however bad the present may appear to be, then we will start spending, start investing, start risking, start doing the things that we do best, and ultimately we will be able to, if we are led well and, felt, and feel invested in the process, that we will be able to turn uh, this economy around and be what we are uh, destined, I hope, to be, and that is the light to the rest of the world of how we not only should govern ourselves, but how other peoples can be successful in their own lives by adopting the model that we have created for ourselves. 
I hope that answers your question. I don't know if it does. If I could just focus yes, uh, your thoughts on the size of government. It seems to me over the last 20 years, companies large and small have made investments in themselves to be more efficient, and in many cases that meant employing fewer people. It seems to me the one segment of our economy that really has not made itself more efficient in delivering services is the federal government, and I wondered if you had some thoughts on how President-elect Obama might approach that. Well, I, I think he will certainly look back on the Clinton presidency because you know, President Clinton uh, had a very um, fundamental aversion to the size of government, and in fact, uh, his reforms were um, uh, real, substantial, and effective, not the least of which was the pay-as-you-go um, uh, process where he said, look, if you're going to give me something that you want to do, you show me how you're going to pay for it first. Um, so I think that in terms of the bureaucracy, uh, it is clearly a, a systemic problem that we have had to live with, certainly since Roosevelt's time. But having said that, we do have things in place. We do have experience in cutting down and making more efficient government. And I am convinced that in terms of efficiency, he has the mindset that will say, look, we, we have the kinds of problems in this country where we cannot afford you if you are not giving the taxpayer value for the money that's being spent on you. And in fact, if you take a look at his book, he was very explicit about his feeling that if government isn't working, government doesn't need to exist. So he will use a scalpel, not a, not a, not a hatchet, which is, of course, the sort of dialogue in the course of the campaign between John McCain and him. But he will use a scalpel, and that scalpel will excise those uh, portions of our bureaucracy which are not pulling their weight or design them or redesign them in a way that they do and fulfill the obligation that they were created to fulfill. That's my sense. Um, obviously, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. 